Welcome to this service of Breaking Bread with Middle Ridge Uniting Church. Wherever you are, our prayer is that you'll be blessed by this time together. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we meet on, the Jarraware and Gaibal people, those who have nurtured this land and continue to do so. And we pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging. The Gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35, on the road to Emmaus. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked about those things, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But God kept them from recognising him. Jesus asked them, What are you talking about as you walk along? They stood still and their faces were sad. One of them was named Cleopas. He said to Jesus, Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in these last few days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. Also, it is the third day since all this happened. Some of our women amazed us too. Early this morning they went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. So they came and told us what they had seen. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. Then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it was empty, just as the women had said. They didn't see Jesus' body there. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are! How long it takes you to believe all that the prophet said! Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures. He began with Moses and all the prophets. They approached the village where they were going. Jesus kept walking as if he were going farther. But they tried hard to keep him from leaving. They said, stay with us. It is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. He joined them at the table. Then he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But then he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, He explained to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and those with them. They were all gathered together. They were saying, It's true. The Lord has risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two of them told what had happened to them on the way. They told how they had recognised Jesus when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
on the Emmaus Road, the hearts of the two disciples burned as they listened to Jesus. Luke's Gospel tells us that Cleopas and a companion, who may have been his wife, are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they're talking about and feeling weighed down by Jesus' crucifixion. When Jesus joins them on the road, they don't recognise him immediately. Perhaps it is their grief and loss that blinds them. But it is when they offer Jesus hospitality, a sign of love, and when he blesses and breaks bread with them, that the revelation happens and they recognise the stranger with whom they have been walking and talking. A transformation takes place within the travellers. They shift from standing still in a state of sadness to being on fire with hope. And in great haste, they return to Jerusalem to tell the other followers of Jesus what they have experienced. They have experienced for themselves Christ's resurrection and they are transformed by it. It's interesting when we examine this story that it wasn't the teaching that they received on the road that triggered the transformation in Cleopas and his companion. What lit them up was the experience of sharing bread with Jesus. And as we break bread, we recognise that communion is actually a sacrament of sharing. A sacrament where we receive a special experience of God as we break and share bread. In this time of the ungathered church, many of us may feel deprived of the opportunity to gather together as a community of faith. We may may be missing the chance to pray together and to share together in the breaking of bread. But if we understand communion as being a transformative act of sharing, then we can recognise that communion is available to us every day because every day contains within it opportunities to share which can affect transformation, opportunities to share which can become for us and for those we share with, an experience of God's grace. Though we may not be able to gather together as community of faith, we have the opportunity to participate in the sacrament of sharing wherever we are and wherever we go. Last night, I spent time uh, watching the Foreign Correspondent article on the coronavirus in New York. And some very disturbing images came out. Images of frightened shoppers fighting with each other and of armed protesters taking to the streets across the United States. It's easy for us to think that this pandemic time is bringing out the worst in people. But it is worthwhile also noticing that this time of crisis 
is also bringing out selflessness in many, many people. About four weeks ago, in the midst of the panic, a Melbourne woman set up a Facebook page which has become a hub for sharing acts of kindness and stories of kindness in these unprecedented times. Her name is Catherine Barrett and she set up a Facebook page called The Kindness Pandemic. And in less than a month, the group has grown to 500,000 members. Catherine says, We are all motivated by a want to share acts of kindness that won't make the virus go away, but will make people's lives easier and connect us to our shared humanity. Catherine Barrett has been as surprised as anyone by the response to her initiative, but she's calling it an international revolution of kindness. And if you haven't had a chance to visit the page, my advice to you would be have a look at it and, uh, and join up because it will mean that your news feed is transformed by stories of human sharing. Your news feed will be transformed by the sacrament of kindness. I want to share with you one story that has stood out for me in the last few days. A person has written, she's written about her 96-year-old father-in-law. She says, while my father-in-law was having some routine blood tests done last week, he mentioned to the nurse that he and his wife had only one roll of toilet paper left at home. And every time they went to their neighbourhood supermarket to stock up again, they were finding that they'd missed out. He asked the nurse if she knew of a shop that had a stock of toilet paper where perhaps he could go shopping on his way home. The nurse sadly shook her head and said she didn't know of any stocks around. Well, that evening... Just as the father-in-law and his wife were finishing up dinner, there was a knock on their door. And it was that same nurse from the blood test holding in her arms a large packet of toilet paper. After a full day of work, she and her friend had searched at least 10 different stores until they found what the father-in-law needed. And what's more, they wouldn't take a penny for their troubles. How wonderful acts of kindness are in times like this. The sacrament of communion. The sacrament of sharing and kindness is something we can celebrate every day. And may we do so in the name of Christ. Amen. join this morning in our prayers of the people. Loving Heavenly Father, 
we bring to you our prayers for others and ourselves as we navigate through these troubled times. We thank you for the slowing of the spread of the coronavirus in Queensland and Australia, and we look forward in hope for the gradual and carefully considered easing of restrictions that have so greatly influenced our lives over recent weeks. Although the situation seems to be improving in Australia, we are very aware that many people in other countries are still contracting the virus and dying daily. We pray that vulnerable people and nations will receive the support they need to control the virus and to save precious lives. We thank you for all those who have dedicated their lives to serving our community. We ask for your protection and blessing for health workers, doctors, nurses, paramedics, and especially those who labour in laboratories seeking to develop vaccines and treatments for the coronavirus. Give them wisdom, skill and patience in their work, and by your grace, grant them success in their endeavours. We pray for those who govern us, for our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk, and all those in responsible government roles. Thank you for their courageous leadership and cooperation across state and territory boundaries. Grant them wisdom in their decisions as they seek to preserve both lives and livelihoods. We also pray for our police force, our emergency services and defence force personnel as they seek to maintain order in our country. May all Australians respect their work, accept the current limitations on our freedoms and seek the welfare of others for the good of all. We pray that by our example, we may assist in cultivating a sense of calmness and peace and a spirit of unselfish goodwill towards others. We especially bring before you those who are sick, those confined in quarantine and those who have lost loved ones to this terrible virus. We think especially of the family and friends of Reverend Des Williams, whose funeral was held earlier this week. We also know that many people's lives have been thrown into personal and economic turmoil through loss of employment. We pray that they may be able to access support from government and others in our community to provide the resources they need to live with hope and dignity. We bring to you the teachers, students and parents who are starting a new school term and juggling the demands of totally new teaching methods, often with students isolated in private homes where parents are also working. Please, loving Heavenly Father, draw close to those who are alone or troubled at this difficult time, especially those who don't have access to dig digital technology calm their troubled hearts and move their friends, family, neighbours and acquaintances to provide support and encouragement. We also bring to you those in our congregation and beyond who are battling mental and physical illness or bereavement at this time. We especially pray that you will uphold the family and friends of our dear brother Ian Schneider whose funeral was held on Tuesday. We give you thanks for his long and productive life, his cheery personality and his generosity of spirit that he shared so freely with many of us who worship you in this place. We pray for healing, hope and comfort for all of these people and the others known to us that we bring before you now. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you understand our suffering for you too suffered rejection, humiliation and a painful death on the cross to rescue us from the powers of darkness. Help us to contribute to your work of bringing healing and wholeness to this troubled world. Remind each of us that we do not need to make the journey of life on our own, in our own strength, but that you are here, as close to us as our own breath, to fill our hearts with your love Surround us with your powerful protective arms and guide us in your path. Elusive God, 
companion on the way. You walk behind, beside and beyond. You catch us unawares. Break through the disillusionment and despair clouding our vision that with wide-eyed wonder we may find our way and journey on as messengers of your good news. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have prepared bread and juice at home, you may like to join with me in breaking the bread and blessing the cup as we move through the communion liturgy. There will be music to follow the liturgy to give you time to share the elements together at home before we conclude in prayer. So now we do what Jesus did in an upper room on the night before he died. Jesus took bread, the simplest of food. He blessed it and broke it and shared it with his friends, people like us, people who had at times annoyed each other and let each other down. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. People of God, look for the truth in this breaking. Do you not see our own human brokenness made holy and made whole by the presence of Jesus Christ? Later in the meal, Jesus took wine, the fruit of the vine. Again, he blessed it and held it, and then shared it with his friends. People just like us, who despite their frailties and shortcomings, were loved by God and called by name. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, a new relationship with God, which I offer to each of you. People of God, do you not see the truth in this offering? Do you not see the pouring out of God's grace, bringing to life all that is good in us. And so we pray. Loving God, we ask that through the gift of your spirit, poured out upon each one of us and upon this bread and wine, that we will receive what we are to become, that we will become what we are to receive, the body of Christ in this time and place. of you. Take it into your hearts now and go and live it. You have gathered around the light of Christ. Go forward 
and carry the light to all those you meet. People of God, you are called and equipped to serve the world with love. In the name of Christ.